start recording this. I sometimes forget we record this and then I'll send out the recording link afterwards so you can see who was who was on and who came. And, and so what we'd like to do is uh, we like to get to speak as much Yiddish as possible. I don't speak much Yiddish, I understand a little bit, but we're gonna ask everybody that can to, to share their stories in Yiddish, do a little translation if they can, you know, either at the end or at the end of each sentence. Some people are very good at this. Um, David, yes. Question, do you know Alan Cahan? Ah, very well, he's a good friend of mine, yes. He's been my friend since we were in kindergarten together. Yeah, Al Alan Cahan and I, I have have been with the FJMC for a long time. Now, now one of the things that that we we've been getting more and more people. So we usually use gallery view and, and people raise their hand. But at the bottom of your screen is something called reaction, and there's a place where you could raise your hand. So if we don't see you, you can raise your hand like that. Yeah. See, see my hand is up there, and that way I'll be able to see you. And and when you raise your hand, it will come onto my screen. So anyway. Um, so, so I'm going to hand it over to Joe, I mean, to Alan. Joe Rothstein is a partner with us on this. He couldn't make it tonight, uh, but sends his, his regards to everybody, and he'll be on in the next uh, session in two weeks from now. So I'm going to hand it over to Al and uh, take it. Thank you, Mike. You might, might want to put your hand down so we don't all get confused. Um, the first it. thing is, uh, we'd like to say welcome to everybody. I'm glad that you joined us back. Is there anybody new on the screen tonight that this is their first time? Okay, so I see at least two, three. Wonderful. All right, so um, Ken Kaplan, you don't look like a Ken, but you could be. Um, I'm just, I'm, the hair is kind of fooling me. So how about if you introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you're from, where you learned your Yiddish, and if you can say all that in Yiddish, that's even better, but then please translate for those who don't speak as I get. <laughs> no, no, I can't say it in Yiddish. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, with American-born parents, Ken Kaplan from uh, New Jersey. Um, I grew up with uh, American-born parents, but their parents were all born abroad and they all spoke Yiddish and my parents spoke Yiddish but they only spoke it around the kids when they didn't want us to understand. So, you know, I picked up what I picked up, but not very much. Um, but when I was a, um, and to me, it was always, you know, a language that older people spoke. Uh, when I was uh, going to college at Brandeis University, I had occasion to visit Expo 67. And one of my classmates happened to be David Roskies, who was a Yiddish speaker. And he became a, uh, he's a professor at uh, Jewish Theological Seminary in Yiddish literature today. He's, he's very well known. Um, and he invited me and my friend to stay at his house in Montreal. And it was there when some relatives came over with some little children, which is the first time in my life I ever heard little children speaking Yiddish. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome. Glad to have you aboard. Um, don't worry if you don't speak well. Not everybody on this uh, uh, Zoom can speak, you know, very, very good. Some speak really fluently and some not. Just pick up what you can as you go along. I promise that whenever we speak, you know, only in Yiddish, we will translate for you. Okay. Um, did I see, um, let's see, I thought I saw somebody. Richard, Yanku, you are also new, yes? I am new. Um, I, uh, I'm originally from Albany, New York. I grew up and was born, born and raised in Albany. Uh, left Albany, joined the Navy in 1973. Uh, retired in 1993 and then went into school teaching until uh, I retired in 2019. Uh, now, I, I don't know any Yiddish, but very, uh, very little, uh, only as you were saying, not the swear words, but yeah, the, the, the swear words. But I, I picked up a, a Mickey Katz record when I was about 11 or 12 years old that my parents had. I put it on a record player and... Um, Shit, 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 a bissel was the first words that I heard from that record. They, uh, they, uh, that, that just drove me insane. I, uh, I brought it to my parents and, and, uh, I played it and, uh, they were hooting and hollering about it. I, the only other thing I remember about Yiddish was my parents spoke Yiddish or with their, with the, my, um, uh, nanny and poppy or Bubby and Zadie. And uh, the one word I remember was Hezachain, which uh, was, uh, I guess, the word listen. listen. Yeah, listen. listen. Oh, Hezachain, Hezachain, yeah. yeah. 
Very good. Well, again, Richard, welcome. And and for those on the board who are not uh, really fluent Yiddish speakers, shit means to pour, but to pour a solid. Geese is to pour a liquid. Shit is to pour a solid. But for a 12-year-old to hear shit, 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 <laughs> they're all excited. Oh, I, okay. thought, I, thought, I thought somehow that was going to connect to what a shicker is, but I guess not. <laughs> No. Okay. Uh, I thought there was a connection. I don't think so. All right. Uh, was it Esther from Toronto that's also new? Yes, I'm Esther, a friend of Esther Shears, who uh, told me about your uh, Zoom, which is very nice. I've been from uh, Toronto. I've read a bit of Yiddish. The mom and papa gewesen from Poland. Their parents, my parents, are from Poland. My sisters do Hane. See, honey, that's my sister. We're uh, fear kinded, zwei jingelich and zwei meidlich. So there's two boys and two girls. And my parents are survivors of the Holocaust, uh, which is a miracle. They uh, had, uh, my mother was the oldest of eight, the only one who survived. My father also had sisters and a wife before and child that were taken away and killed. Anyway, so we grew up with, children, uh, with parents who were survivors, um, which was loving but hard because they came with nothing. Anyway, so my parents also spoke Yiddish when they didn't want us to understand uh, what they were saying. My husband and I, this is my husband, Albert, his parents were also survivors, but they got to Russia. Family also disappeared. So we used to speak Yiddish at home when our kids were young. When our kids were little, we, that's, we, learned, we just started to speak Yiddish, so it got better because we used it when we didn't want our kids to understand. So I started, my sister and I started, my sister actually started first. She started a uh, Facebook page called uh, the Toronto Area Daughters of Survivors. So you had to be a daughter of a survivor and you had to speak or understand Yiddish. So we started with 10 girls, Esther Shear was part of the group, the 10 girls in my sister's house. And it was amazing because we compared stories of our parents and we found that some of the girls' parents were in the same concentration camps making ammunition. It was a real bonding. Then I told my sister, I'll invite a lot of people I knew that were children of survivors. And we had 70 people in my condo. Then we had over 200. Uh, it just grew. Now I have close to 400 women on my list. So we couldn't get together last year because of the COVID. So I'm just doing something with a psychiatrist online. We're going to do a Zoom for that she specializes in children of survivors. And she's a survivor herself. But when we met the first, the third time with all these girls in a huge room, you can't imagine what it was like to see all these women who we knew a lot of them when we were kids because we didn't have family. Our family was the survivors and their children. So a lot of us never kept in touch and they, all these women, a lot of them knew each other when they were kids. We were all little kids, you know? So it was a real bonding experience. So I know that half these women would be on this in five minutes if I told them all, but I only told a few people because they want, to speak, they want to speak Yiddish and that's the whole thing. You know, if you can well, handle well, it, I can get them on here next time. You can knock yourself out, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Esther, Esther so, so I think, you know, we, we heard from your friend that there was uh, the other Esther yeah. there was a lot of interest in this because I'm yeah. going to guess that there's a, a few, quite a few people that are on this screen right now that would uh, qualify it. And actually, we have one person on this screen that's a survivor herself. She was very young, Tova. Right. And I'm okay. sure you'll hear from her. She just waved, waved at her head. Tova, I'll put my number up if you want to call me. But uh, so, so the question I think this group has is, you want to go global? You want to go international? in your group, because I think I think you can have a lot of people here would like to join. Well, here's my friend, Ellen. Look, my friend, my beautiful girlfriend, Ellen's on here too. Ellen is uh, co-chairing with me. We're just doing something Zoom for the Daughters of Survivors with a therapist who's very well known in New York who, who will talk to Daughters of Survivors because our parents didn't talk a lot. Some talked too much, some didn't talk at all. And nobody, we never talked to our parents about it after because most of our parents are gone. So most of us can talk about what it was like growing up as children of survivors. So uh, Ellen and I are sponsoring that event. But if you've got the Yiddish, you know, mostly people here that can understand or speak Yiddish, that's what these girls are looking for. They're looking to talk Yiddish. 
Esther, no. please invite them. And and forgive me, I'm going to cut you off because I, okay. I really want to get to uh, everybody. Okay. Um, so we will get back to it. You should speak. Tova, why don't you unmute for just a second and, and uh, say hello to Esther and, and uh, just so that she knows who you are. I don't know if she knows how to do that. Let me, I'll, I'll unmute her. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. Give us a second. No, just unmute. Hit the button. If you hit the space bar on your computer, it's over. That will unmute you. Where does it say unmute? Oh, I don't know. It should be working. All right. We'll try again in a little bit. Is there anyone else that's on new this evening? First timer. And say unmute and say hi. Tell us who you are, where you're from, how you learned your Yiddish. Uh, oh my God, I forgot the word. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to make it translate anyway. Oh my so gosh, okay. I forgot already. She is, she invited me. Anyway, Yiddish is my mama Lucian. In the Steve, I've been not great Yiddish, I've been great Italian, and I've been great Ivory. And I have given, actually, for you all, I have given it to the school. And uh, my mama had my gebrengt. I had gone with a kind of tash, you know, uh, a kind. And uh, not to show the the lever of the sock to my mama. I thought the app is fake. But what has been said is that the doctor can go and read in English. Um, so uh, and then I thought my mama thought that I had to learn. If I, if born, you know, my born born in Canada, that I learn in English. Uh, mein ganzer Spruch äh, hat gerät äh, Jiddisch. Ähm, beide von meinen Eltern sind gewähnt von Feulen. Äh, auch hat ähm, gelebt äh, Adolf der de Shoah. Meine Mutter in Siberien, meine Mama in Usbekistan. Und ähm, ich bin Dank für das Mal Kimmel. No, noch einmal auf Englisch. Like Russia, I really yeah, translate. <laughs> Roughly. Uh, she so can't speak English. No, I can't even speak English either. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, not in the same order, but anyway, uh, I grew up, Yiddish is my first language. At home, we only spoke Yiddish, Italian, and Hebrew. Uh, my parents obviously lived in Italy after the war before going to, to Israel. Um, and uh, both of my parents are from Poland. They're both Holocaust survivors. Uh, they, my father was sent to uh, a camp in Siberia. My mother in Uzbekistan. And um, when uh, I went to school, my first day of school in nursery, uh, you know, my mother brought me everything. Is, oh, hold on, sorry, let me turn that off. I don't know how. There we go. And uh, the after school, the, my mother came to pick me up. I was four years old. And the teacher said, so why didn't you tell us your daughter doesn't speak a word of English? <laughs> um, my story is a little bit different than Astor's because my father was the fifth of seven yeah. children, six of which survived, which is unheard of. My mother's the oldest of five, and they all survived. Um, so my family was very insular. We only kind of um, associated with cousins. There were 40 of us and uh, with family. And there were very few outsiders who came in, but any of the outsiders were also survivors. So it was Yiddish all the time and mainly the Polish Yiddish, other than one couple that were my parents' friends that were, um, they were Hungarian. And I remember sitting in my bedroom, my bedroom wall, shared the wall to the dining room. And of course, you know, they sit in the yakna. And through the wall, I hear everybody going, because you can't hear the words, except the one couple, the Hungarian. It was such a pleasure to hear something different. It was so funny. But that's, uh, that's my experience with Yiddish. A shine and dunk, well, welcome, very good. Oh. Ich kenn, ich habe eine Frage. Von mir? Frag, frag. Von mir? Ich wollte sagen, fragen die Frau, wo es, ich ver vergesse ihr Namen, wo es hat, äh, 200 äh, Freunde, wo es reden Jiddisch, 
Wer ist die erste Frau? von Toronto. Uh, ja, ich wollte ihr fragen, eine Frage. Frag? Aber wie ist sie? Ich sehe ihr nicht. <lacht> oh, du ist sie. Oh, Esther. Esther von Toronto. Ja, ja. Äh, ja. Adi, 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 They were Hungarians, Czechs, they wanted to come to. So I said, okay. But I would say 90% of them speak or understand Yiddish. My question is that those who are weaker in Yiddish, do you have any special classes, you know, informal to no, help so them? We've only, we've only, we don't do it on Zoom. We have never done a Zoom. We've only done it in person. But oh, because okay. we had to cancel last May, I decided okay, to keep okay. the group together. We're going to have a, psych, uh, a psychologist, Who's, her name is Arit Felsen. You can look her up on YouTube and listen to her talk about uh, children of survivors. And there's all kinds of stuff. How did we you manage? Know, how did we manage this pandemic? Is one of the things she, she talks about. I'm, I'm very. I'm, I'm unique in some way. I'm a child survivor and a child of survivors. Right. So I have the two. So you were born during the war. Where were you born? In in uh, I was born in Danzig, in Danzig. Poland, right. and I spent my whole time in Poland till the end. And you came to America when? What year? Did, did I what? When did you I, come I to the United up, States? I ended up in Auschwitz. Liberation. In fact, my liberation is coming up two weeks from now. And I'm speaking somewhere, but we are. Well, you know, maybe we'll have you and we can get together. We'll have you either zoom in or you, we'll fly you in and you can tell your story. What a I'm story she I'm has. So. Story. What a story she has. Al, Al uh, Mort Al. has his hand up. Okay, Mort. Uh, let's see, I don't think I see Mort on my screen, so go ahead, Mort. We don't hear you. I'm, I'm speaking now. I'm Mort. I, I, I just follow up on a prior discussion. I'll just tell a, a true story. Oh, many of us learned Yiddish from our parents and grandparents when they didn't want us to understand. And then we learned. Uh, I was a little boy. My grandmother was uh, a rather sickly lady, and my mother would often walk over to her apartment uh, to help her cook and to do her cooking for her. So, and my grandmother would sit in the corner and give her instructions, and she would uh, give her, and there were no recipes, uh, just a shitterine abyssal zouts and shitterine abyssal pepper. And she went chit, chit, chit. So I'm walking home with my, my mother and I said, look, at, uh, yeah, uh, you tell me I can't use those kinds of words. I was a little, I was a, I was a kid. I was probably four or five years old and I can't use those kinds of words. So she finally explained to me uh, that it's poor and it's not the bad word. But this is a true story. It actually happened when I was a child. Cute, cute. Thank you, Sandy. All right, who else is new to the group tonight? Sarah? I am. Right, Ellen. Right. Ellen, all right, we'll get, to you. we'll get to you in a second. I noticed Sarah first. So no problem. Sarah, HS, unmute. Tell us who you are, where you're from, where you learned your Yiddish. If you have okay. to yes, uh, I'll be short and sweet because my sister did a little bit of the story. Um, what I want to tell you about my parents is they had four children. Two in, uh, I was born in Germany. I was just six months when I came. So two of us were born in Germany, my parents in Poland and Esther and my younger brother in Toronto. So we're very diverse. And from the four of us came 10 grandchildren. And can I know horror from the 10 grandchildren, 21 great grandchildren. Wow. So my parents did a good job. <laughs> and uh, we did well and Hitler can stay in drift. <laughs> and that's the end of my story. <laughs> I shame them dunk. Ellen, please talk to us. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. I want to thank my girlfriend, my beautiful girlfriend, Esther, for introducing me to this group. It's it's 
Great, I hear so much about it. Meine Jiddisch, meine Sprach nicht sehr gut, efter ich kann verstehen alles. Um, I was born in New York, married a Canadian, so now I live in Toronto. My mother was from Vilna, Lithuania. My father from a little town in Poland called Lenina that used to be part of Russia and part of Poland and went back and forth. And uh, both of them are survivors. My mother survived many slave labor camps and at the end a death camp and she escaped the death march. And my father was a partisan fighter and he had wonderful stories. And I used to sit and listen to his stories because every Sunday morning, I don't know if it was ABC or CBS, they used to have docu war documentaries and we would sit and we'd have breakfast and we would listen. And that's when he used to tell me all his stories. So I originally, I was born in Brooklyn and and uh, my parents spoke Yiddish at home, so I understand Yiddish. Um, but eventually they spoke, you know, more English as time passes. But Polish, they refused to speak Polish. So I never learned Polish. They only spoke Polish when they didn't want us to understand. And um, so that's, that's basically my story. And you're sticking to it. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. And what, what Ellen said in the very beginning in Yiddish, which we didn't translate, she she, is, she understands very well, but her speaking My is speaking not, quite is up to not so good. Right. This does I get. Okay. Who else is new? Oh, Hannah, Hannah's raising her hand. Hannah? Lenina. Lenina. A Le small town. Lenin. Lenina, Lenina. Oh, my, my mama is from my mama is from Lenin. Nicht Lenina, Lenin. In Poland. Das ist der selbe Sache. A klein chick, the gehage, the ganze Stadt. Yeah, yeah, the ganze. You the whole state. Yes. Yeah, in ein Tag, in ein Tag. Yeah, yeah. They give, they, they give the men are back, and those was geblieben. Deine Tata? Deine Tata? Meine Mama. My mommy. Uh -huh. What's his mommy's nom? No, my mommy given given as my mom, my mommy given Schuster. A Schuster. The, the last time. And my, and my, 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 uh, my, uh, my, uh, my father, er given in the, we say, given to all men in uh, Hanshevich, I mean, in the, in the camp, was the Alice of Leufenfindor to the men. And, 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 my, that, and, uh, given. Herschel, Herschel Schuster, er jetzt gestorben. Er gewinnt 98 Jahre alt. Und uh, für die ganze Familie, sie gehargt in ein Top, die Eltern, die Seide, die Bobbe, die alle, die, 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 alle Menschen. Und sie genehmt auf der auf de Seite 25 äh, äh, Menschen, was geblieben. Mm -hmm. Und meine Mama mm -hmm. und die Schwester gewinnt. Das ist gewinnt auf der Grenze von Russland und Polen. Ja. Yeah. We went out a, a river, Dortmund, in between. That, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so what, what we, we need have to here, talk. Hannah, we, we need to Yeah, yeah. We have a connection here again. There is a book. Alan. 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 I just want to say yes. one thing. One thing. There is a book that was published from this woman in Toronto. Uh, Faye, Sha Faye yes. Zednik, she used to be She's Shalitou. a photographer, yes. She was a photographer. She That's was my the she, photographer. She was, she was in my mother's group that remained alive, the 25 people. She wow. was she was taking pictures during the partisans. She, she was the photographer of the, of the people that oh. killed the people in the, in the trenches. She, the, in her book. I have her book. Uh, I don't know, but I have, have her book. Ladies, yes. this is great. Give us a yeah. second, Shirley. You wanted to say something. <laughs> Anna, your mom? A okay, Hannah, then mom is giving a partisan or nine? No, the niche, no, no, the, the niche genem, they get at uh, its fake babies, or the niche give all the name and over my mom's cousin, ke, given in the partisan, and my mom's breeder given in the partisan. Oh. They all give, they give, give in the welder. They, they, um, we talk to me, they, they, they hear, oh. In the given in the welder. The forest, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just the welder. For the non-speakers, a lot went back and forth, and that's absolutely great. But for those who don't fashte as I get, okay, quickly what we discovered is that Hannah's family and Ellen's family from the same town. 
and that that town was wiped out in one day. Um, the, the men, some of them were marched off, if I read, heard you all correctly. Yes, to the slave labor the, camps. The seniors yeah. were all killed. Um, and and uh, The kids, the children, the young people that were there. Okay, so translate the rest just quickly, Hannah, so those who didn't get the full full story will get the rest of it quickly. They, 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 they took, they took uh, the young men to, to labor camps. Slave and, labor camps, uh, yeah. The, and in one day, they got everybody to come in the morning to the town center, and they took him in trucks. They took aside a few people they needed, like uh, my uh, my mother's. I told you the story. My mother's young aunt with her uncle. He was an auto mechanic, and uh, she. My mother was holding one of their twin kids. They and she went out of the line to give her aunt the the, the baby, and she told her to stay. And my mother's young younger sister ran out of there too. But they, they put them all on trucks a short way up the hill where they had dug already trenches and they shot about 800, I think it was like about 1900 people, the whole town they shot. And except for this little group that remained that stayed in the synagogue for two weeks until the partisans, and it was one of the, one of the young guys from the town, by the way, everybody ran away from that camp when they found out what happened. In one day, just helter skelter, they ran away. But my mother's two brothers were killed were killed and one brother uh, um, joined the partisans, but uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the one from the, towns, the town person that was with the partisans convinced them to attack Lenin. He said it was a depot for uh, ammunition. So he told them to run away, the 25 people in the synagogue. And indeed they came and attacked the, the town and they burned the town and my mother, and they all ran away. My mother went to the forest with her and an uncle, a sister, and two babies, and everybody else went away. Some of them joined the partisans. And um, that's how they were for a few years. My mother was in the forest for, for a few years, hungry and searching for food. They and uh, they must have known she Ellen's was father. Four, 14 years old, huh? I bet you they knew Ellen's father. They, her, so they, what, must, what's have, your father? they must have. It's, what's a, it's a small town. What's your, father, was what's your father's name? Groinem Sigalovich with with four brothers. So him and four brothers went to the partisans. Uh, his sister and younger brother died when they when they killed everybody in the town. But when they first came, they took the, the men to the slave labor camp. Right. Then they heard what was happening and they escaped the slave labor camp and they right. went in was into the so I, I have the memorial, I have the memorial book I, with all the names. Really, Donna, we're going to have some time to, at the end where you guys can chat, and Shirley's going to want to talk to wonderful. Anne, Anne because she, she's got exactly the same background. Shirley was born in Italy, and and I think Anne and her. And Anna and uh, you can next. Oh, so so at, at the Austria. end, we're going to have an open open time where you guys can chat. I have to tell you how tremendous this is that we can make such connections, and just it's unfortunate we only have an hour, but. You can get together. Uh, Mike does have a list of everybody's contact information and you can speak to him and, and arrangements can be made for you guys to speak separately offline. And I hope and pray that so many of us will do that um, because it really furthers the stories. Is there anyone else that's new to the to the group this evening? Please uh, raise your hand. And Sandy, if you would be kind of, or Mort, to put your hand down take the hand raise off so we don't get confused well, the same way you put it up you put it down um who else is new to the group anybody hi. this is david minor can anyone hear can everyone hear me we hear you hi hi welcome i'm i'm from highland park new jersey which is Woo! where al, al is from <laughs> um and um in fact, Al's the reason why I'm here. He told me all about it. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm one of those people that knows next to nothing about Yiddish. Um, when I was very young, I, <clears throat> my parents used to speak Yiddish only when they didn't want us to understand, the children to understand anything. So we knew in that sense that Yiddish was special. Uh, you know, it was, it was like an unknown. <laughs> Um, and they use it like that, so they didn't teach us any Yiddish. Um, I have one fond memory of Yiddish when I was very young, <clears throat> and that is that I used to live in Elizabeth, New Jersey, as a boy, 
And there was a big rabbi there by the name of Rabbi Tights, Rabbi mm -hmm. Pinchas Tights. I know him. Not the one today, but the father, the, the older one. Father, I knew the father. And he was a legendary man who built up the entire community from scratch. And when I was very young, on the Sabbath, on the Shabbos, I used to come into shul in the afternoons, you know, for the Mincha prayer and the Mara prayer. My, we used to come in beforehand. And there was the rabbi speaking. He was giving his class. <clears throat> um, he was giving a class, a class in Gemara um, in Yiddish, in yeah. Yiddish. And I would come and sit myself down and just listen to him. And I was just transfixed by his speaking. There was something about the way he spoke and what he said, I don't know. I couldn't, I didn't understand a word, but I just enjoy just listening to the sound of the Yiddish and the sound of his voice. So that's the memory. And I made an association at an early age that Yiddish was something holy and beautiful. Didn't know what it was, didn't understand the word of it or it was something beautiful. I just, um, but I never really had an, a formal opportunity. Well, there's one I'll tell you about and then I'm done. But um, that was my you know, experience with Yiddish. Um, when I was older, um, as a young adult, there was a synagogue in Manhattan called Lincoln Square Synagogue. Yeah, still Rabbi split. Riskin, Rabbi Steve Riskin. <laughs> Shlomo Riskin, who's now in Israel and Ephra, right. I think. So he, he, uh, his synagogue innovated these these innovative classes on different things. Some of them were, I don't think they were even related to. There was a, one of them I attended was on vegetarianism, but different exotic Jewish topics. And one of them was a class on Yiddish. So I decided I'm going to take the class, and uh, lo and behold, when I showed up. And it was in a, one of the classrooms. I, oh, I, they give me the book and show me they're already on like chapter 10 or something like that, or chapter 12. And I said, and, the, and I, I was confused. Why are we starting over here? And they said, this is part two. <laughs> and part one wasn't available. Uh, that, that semester, they were only giving part two. So um, I said, I'll take whatever I can get. So I had to do twice the volume of the Yiddish each week. I had to start from the beginning and rush and do twice as much as a normal student. Um, and I found it overwhelming. And unfortunately that class, I, I was not able to absorb and come because of the, the tremendous stress and the tremendous uh, uh, intensity of the course, I got very little out of it. And it turned me away, actually. I, I gave up. I thought to myself, I, will not, I, I won't be able to understand Yiddish. So that was my experience. Okay. So. Here you can learn a few words. A poor veta. Okay. Well, last call. Is there anybody else that's new to the group, please? Um, hi, my name is Sheila. I'm new. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, oh, we can. Oh, okay. Hi. So I want to invite Esther. I apologize. I was working. I was on another call. I didn't even know what I was coming in, but I know when Esther invites me to something, it's always good. So I'm very happy to meet all of you. Um, I was one of the 10 women um, that was part of Esther's original uh, group at her sister's honey's house. So when I... Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I and when I came to Honey's house and I started speaking Yiddish, um, I don't know, it was so exciting. We ended up with that group of 250 women and I went from just being a participant to Esther made me the MC. So, um, right. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, my mom is in, um, in a kleine gasteles of geheis pahalze. It's given zeyen nu into levov. Um, and the tat is given a zamushcha. And my mama kenaina hara pu 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 is a hin that you are out. And ich ken red in Yiddish mit the mama, but took in benacht. But took in benacht. Ins red in a bisl Yiddish. And ihr wollt ech in Toronto? Yeah, ich wollt in Toronto. Okay. Part of Would our you... group of daughters of survivors from Toronto. Translate the rest of what you said, please, Sheila, for those who don't understand. Oh. 
what I said is I like to speak Yiddish. I can speak Yiddish like an old lady from the get, like from the shtetl, right? Because I'm very, very fortunate. Can I know her? I still have my mother. Both my parents were born in Poland. My father was from a place, a city called Zamusz, and he ended up spending the war in Siberia. Um, and my mother was born in a very, very small shtetl. There were only nine Jewish families. It was called Pahalza, and it was near Lvov. Um, and my parents met in a displaced persons camp in Germany. Both my sisters were born in Israel and I was born in Montreal. So I have parents whose mother's tongue were Polish, my sisters are Sabras and my first language was French. Wow, <laughs> amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Thank you, Sheila. Anybody else that's new, one more time. Going once, go up. Sandy, are you new to the group? Yeah, uh, unmute, unmute. I, I just have a question from the last speaker. I'm curious as to what her occupation is. What my occupation is? is was yeah. that the question? Um, I am an executive director for a charity in Toronto. It's called RENA, and we take care of people with developmental disabilities. So uh -huh. it's interesting that you ask because my mother, when she when she found that she was pregnant with me, she thought she was going through the change of life because she was well into her 40s, right? As you can appreciate, I speak Yiddish like I'm 95 years old and I'm a lot younger than that. So um, when she found out she was pregnant, they um, tried to counsel her into having an abortion because they said her chances of having a Down syndrome baby or a child with developmental disabilities was greater than 60%. And now look what I do for a living. That's all I do is I raise money to support people, right? The men, the men straft and got lacht. My, my, my wife Sandy sitting next to me has a master's in, in uh, special uh, needs education. And she worked in it in, the, in, in an inner city school, as well as being the principal. No, Raymond hat for a lead for us in a mansion of a vitz. A vitz. A vitz. A guy. Yiddish alive. Okay. Go ahead, Shirley. Let us have it. Okay. I don't know if I know all the words. So, ihr gehört as a airplane is gefallen. In uh, of an airplane, then in given a grosse group had us a fallen, and the kimmen are off to gun Aiden and got as their faclemt a lot nish plats that simmer on then in his great. So I hyped up the, the telephone and it calls and haver the Teufel and so hey, uh, can't Martina Teufel. I can't name an alley of flow and foul poor take be busy have hoopen that simmer and glide. And the Teufel Zuch, sure, nicht a problem, so nicht a, nicht a, a buyer. So then uh, the next took, but now the Teufel griefed God. And I hyped him to shrine. Nem dear flow and zurück, I can't nicht handle in my, you know, in Gehenna. So God said, what is the problem? And, and uh, the Teufel said, and I took um, these Hadassah uh, Fallen to Zaman Ganem and Azoifil Gelt and some Gekoyft air conditioners. <laughs> I'll tell it in English now. <laughs> yes, stop English. Yes, stop okay. English. Uh, an airplane crashes, and on it was a large group of Hadassah women. They come up to heaven and God is very upset. He doesn't have enough rooms ready for these women. So he calls his friend Satan and he says, listen, do me a favor. Can you take the group for a few days while I manage the rooms? And uh, Satan says, of course, no problem. The next day at, in the evening, God gets a phone call from the devil. Listen, you've got to take them back. I can't take it anymore. And God says, what's the problem? And he says, these Hadassah women collected enough money in one day to air condition it all of hell. <laughs> Very good. That's good. <laughs> Nachena? Yeah, Marshall, go ahead. Talk to yeah, us. Unmute yourself, Marshall. There you go. 
I've got one for you. Let me just go. Nope. Yep. Hang on for one. Uh, wrong one, hold on. You're good. Yeah. Wrong one, wrong one. Hold on. I can just go. We, we hear you. All right. Hang on for one second here. And that finished. The stuff is spinning. He has to find it. Damn computer. There you go. Okay. He's got to read Ready? We're all adults here, right? Yeah. Okay. Zwei Freuen treffen on the gas. The hot new gazen ain't for a long sight. Two women meet in the street. They hadn't seen each other for a long time. In the schmooze, the topic comes out about their sex lives. Eine Frau sagt, oi, mein Mann, er ist alt, er kennt nicht mehr. One woman says, oh, my husband is old, he can't do it anymore. The andere Frau sagt, oi, mein Mann ist so wie ein Jünger, er will mir spielen den ganzen Tag. The woman says, my husband is like a young man, he wants to play with me all day. Nu, wo ist deine Secret? Oi, my man gets to the doctor, and the doctor gives him a shot for monkey glands. <laughs> monkey glands? Yeah. If Bill Gibbons is the woman for the doctor, she can a man's doctor, Bill is saying, up, up, God. I will give you the name of the doctor, send your husband there, you won't be disappointed. A poor talk später, the fly and half a knock ball. A few days later, they meet again. No, that a man not going to the doctor? Did your husband go to the doctor? Yo? No? What's passing? What happened? Oi, vey, the doctor had the cane monkey glands. I shot the monkey glands and give my husband a shot for the hunt. The doctor didn't have any monkey glands. Instead, he gave and my shot from Doglands. What's the man with my man? All a tug, a leck, and a schmeck, and a pissed off in vant. <laughs> translate. <laughs> that one I will not translate. Okay, so, so I will translate. Now I want to introduce, Al, can I introduce Sheila? She's going to do the Yiddish, and I'm going to translate in English. All right, let me just finish this, and then yes. So okay. what he said is they didn't have monkey glands, had dog glands. And the lady says, what's the problem with that? So all he does is lick himself, smell uh, people by the tuckers, and he pees on the wall. <laughs> That's all he does. <laughs> That's like you have to remember that. Okay, now Esther, go ahead. Okay, so Sheila's going to tell a story. It's a true story, but she's very, very eloquent in her Yiddish, and she is very funny. I mean, All right, so if you please, like maybe two sentences at a time and then translate and then another two, if you can do that, that's great. Okay, okay. so okay. Es Esther is going to be my translator? I'm going to be the uh, yeah. translator. Okay, uh, this is a true story. It's a, it's a bit of a long story, so I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version, okay? <laughs> okay, so it says, Zay is a bit of a sad for me. My man of me ever lost as a vegan often with the shiks. It's given Zay a so you get that. So she had a very tough life at, at, at one point. She had a husband who left her for a uh, shiksa. Uh, okay. Ich habe so ein Meure gehabt. Es ist die Mama, es gibt eine Puhe, Nancy, die war alt. Und ich habe Meure gehabt, es gibt eine Zahn, die Mama, als sie schande, als sie geht, sie kann auf Schiff sterben dafür. She was worried to tell her mother that she was going to, that she's getting a divorce because it's a horrible thing. It's a shanda, a crime to, to tell your mother. And she was in her 90s and, you know, you don't want to disappoint your parents. Okay. 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 So she calls up the cardiologist because she doesn't want to tell her mother unless she takes her mother to cardiologist to make sure that her heart is okay because she's going to tell her that her husband left her for the shiksa. Okay. 
Der Kerl, der lagert mit Kleid. Was bist du schon rot vom Sinnen? Geist bringen da, Mama, du, das haben wir so gesagt. Was kann ich dir? Was kann ich dir helfen? Du darfst verstehen, dass der Kerl, der lagert, gewähnt ein Gehler, nicht kein Griner. Nicht verstanden, was ich habe gebraucht. So the cardiologist wanted to know if she's out of her mind that you're bringing your mother here to tell her a, a story, tell her that your, your husband left you. He says, and he was a, not a, a child of survivors or it wasn't a European, he was just an American or Canadian cardiologist. So he didn't understand why she was coming there before he was, she was gonna tell her mother because of her heart. She wanted to make sure, yeah. her, she wanted to make sure her heart was okay before he, she told her. Told so, her. Bin ich herangekommen mit der Mama zum Kardiolog. Und ich habe so gezittert. Ich habe ihm gemacht, als so ein Mischige ist er gestanden in der Winkel mit den Defibrillators. Okay, er hat gewartet, dass er geht, dass er sagt, Mama, die Sachen ist er gestanden dort mit den Defibrillators. Er hat so gezittert, dass er gesagt hat, so ein Meure, als die Mama kann einfach sterben dort, wenn er geht, dass er sagt, das ist eine Schande. Go ahead, Esther. <laughs> I laugh every time she tells it. She says the doctor was standing there with the defibrillator just in case her mother was going to have a heart attack because she had to tell her mother her husband left her for the shiksa. And I have done the same thing in the shiksa. Okay, the child of the mama, mama, I have a son, my the the man of my ribbon lost, first can of teen. And, and I have I have considered I have reminded Mamish as epis kind concealed to the mama. Okay? So you want me to continue? So, yeah. so so basically, I told my mother, and I was shaking because I was worried what's going to be, what's going to be. So like this, she flipped into survivor mode, and she looks at me and she goes, "But what's that so in my head? Is it given to a zamtzia?" Why were you so worried? Would you think he was such a bargain? And noch dem Motzem gez de zalte zoi. Okay. Is a gamzule teuve. Gamzule teuve. Dus geit och et zan for the git. Jetzt dos de moire. Jetzt bist de zoi for drossen. But zog nisch mein kind. Dus geit och et zan for epis gits. Everything will be all right. You can go watch. You'll do better in English. Okay. So <laughs> basically, she said to me, don't worry. You know what? Everything happens for a reason. And this too is going to be for the good. And then she says to me, and what did you do with Dr. Nussmann? But I thought my lawyer is a doctor. So she said, what are we doing here at the cardiologist? You need a lawyer, not a, not a cardiologist. So, you know, we always feared our parents. We didn't want to disappoint them. We feared they would take it so badly. But they go into survivor mode and she was OK. When she told this to the 300 girls in the room, I swear, if they didn't all pish in their hoisen, they all... <laughs> because when you say it all in Yiddish the whole time, and we didn't break it up in English at all, because everybody really understood it. They, I mean, Sheila is an amazing woman. The work that she does, I'm going to promote you though. The work that she does is amazing. The money that she raises for these, these homes, these are adult, adults children whose parents can't take care of them anymore so they're 18 years and up but she has such a so great sense of humor and she's got a lot of great stories and Thank you know you. sometimes the funniest stories are the ones that are true uh, esther seriously yeah the true ones are the funniest and and we do underestimate our parents so yeah. if nobody else has a story i have a small one yeah, also i've been waiting for this i heard it's a good one <laughs> okay so i said ask of yiddish הגט החסידי של משפחה is masked by זוכת הזה דרסק יורק זון is נשת חסינה. A good Hasidic family is very concerned that the 30-year-old son is not married. אזי ריפן זה השדכן ונפרקת מה זה אזור פונן וזין הזון הגשמק הקל. So they, they call a marriage broker, a שדכן, a marriage arranger, and ask him to find for the son a good wife. קום דה שדכן, some heist, und steht da lange Zeit und fragt sich alles auf der Woche und auf der Mama der Tata, als er kann wissen, was er sieht von der Schnur. So they, they, they call, they, uh, the broker comes over to the house to visit. He spends a very long time. He's asking all kinds of questions of the son and his parents. What are you looking for in a wife and a daughter-in-law? <laughs> they give him a long, a long regime von Bader Fennishin. They give him a long shopping list of requirements. The shot can nemt long zichen, 
But unless a freak to be zuchen, as the mishpacha vaita. So the marriage broker takes a long time looking, finally, finally asks to visit the family again. And it tells her from the wonderlich froh er hat gefunden, und sie ist der Punkt der recht älter von der Sinn. And then tells them what a wonderful woman he found, just the right age for the son, everything's perfect. Sie ist glad kosher. Sie kann der Geld in Schule und sie kann alle der Fehler aus dem Wenig und sie kann kochen, kochen schön. So she keeps a glad kosher home. She regularly attends the synagogue. She knows all the davening, all the prayers by heart. And she's a wonderful cook. Sie hat lieb für Kinder und will a grace mishpacha und so klein ist er weg, sie ist schön wie der Welt. She loves children. She wants a large family and to crown it off. She's gorgeous. She's not that gorgeous. The Mishpacha is very impressed with all of them. And very excited. As a bolt, very excited. The family is very impressed with all this news. They get excited that there will soon be a wedding. But the son is very excited and very the man said, and she is very good in bed. But the son pauses and asks off the cuff. She's also good in bed. On for the shadchan, at the zogn ya, at the zogn yin. The marriage broker answers. Some say yes, some say no. <laughs> some say yes, some say no. Dusha the meisa. No, we have time for one more. Uh, nach, nach a meise, nach a witz, nach a I, I have two wissen, what have we done ah, okay. so with uh, the Yiddish language? With the Yiddish language? No, read it, Asia, read it. It's come and it's about um, a porol, a Yiddish por. Em ruft men shimshon, and I ruft men sore. Shibshon und Sore haben gearbeitet sehr schwer, gehorvet dem ganzen Leben. Und sof kol sof, sie haben sich ausgeklieben, zu fahren auf, auf, in ein anderes Land. Sie haben ausgeklieben zu fahren in Tokio, in Japan. Sie sind in rein in einem Aeroplan und haben gesagt sich zusammen, da sind Sore und da sind Shibshon, Und hinter sie sitzt der Por Amerikaner von Texas, John und Dolores. Sie fliehen eine lange Zeit und dort kommen sie schon nun zu Tokio und fahren das, das Aeroplan äh, geht unter. Sore geht er guckt durch den Fenster und sie sieht, dass die Sonne geht er auf. Die Sonne geht auch er auf in Misrach. In Tokio, kodem kol. Gitz ja kuk af Shimshon und Shimshon schloft. Gitz ja maruk und sie schreit. Shimshon, Shimshon, gib a kuk de Sonnschein schoin. Shimshon, Shimshon, gib a kuk de Sonnschein schoin. John und Dolores von Hinton schlofen nicht. Sie hören, was Sora hat geschrien. Und and Dolores said to John, John, look at these Jews. They haven't landed in Japan yet, and they already speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> so translate the whole the story. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty, maybe self-explanatory, but Shimshon Gibakuk de Zun Shine Choin means Shimshon, take a look. The sun is shining already. So if you say it quickly, it kind of sounds like Japanese. Shimshon, give a cook the sunshine choin. Very good. And Very the, good. Other, the other one is about a Jew who comes to Ellis Island. Dokumta an alter id in a capote, geta runter von dem schief, farmatert a lange reise, er is an ganz und zu tumult und men Men, men firtem zu a, eh, zu a clerk, wo sitzt und verschreibt alle Idun, wo sein einer runter von dem Schiff. Und der clerk eh, fragt ihm, Mister, Mister, what's your name? Tell me your name. 
und der Ried äh, an Nebach, er ist ein sehr vermatter und zu tumult, als er hat sich vergessen seinen eigenen Namen, sagt er, schon vergessen, schon vergessen. Oder ja. der Klerk gehört das und umgeschrieben, schon Ferguson. Ja. Okay, schon Ferguson, next. <laughs> okay, so just, just for those who don't speak, so this guy comes over from the old country, you know, and he's dressed in a kapata, the old, you know, traditional garb of, of the old story, and he gets off at Ellis Island, and they direct him to the clerk, and the clerk is asking him what's his name, and he is so, you know, knocked out from the ship, from the ship, he's so uh, uh, mixed up, and, 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 and confused. And he's confused, he, he doesn't... And they ask him his name, and he's so he says, "I, I don't remember Shine Fargeson. I I already forgot my own name." And he says it so many times. The clerk, not knowing any better, writes down an, an English name, Sean Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> no mention. Says Shine Sites again avec. It's uh, it's yeah, about that Joe, time. Music is in, Joe. Alan. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Jeff yeah. is raising his hand. I, I don't see that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Give us one more. Okay. Juren Zurich is given in Stadt, New York, a peddler. And I eat with them, Hittel and Brod and Payas. And when I got a. Oi, wie sagt man? I, a, a, a Stufego, a, a pushcart. Um, kommt a, a policin, a policeman, und sagt, hat der a license? The Yid sagt, nein, hat nicht kein license. Und uh, die Polizien schreibt a, a, a Wiesrufen. Und der Yid darf gehen zum uh, Richterzimmer. Etliche Wort äh, noch, er kommt zum Richtzimmer und der Klerk gibt der Krug auf der Jid und er sagt, ah, wir darf dort in Anibet setzen. Okay. Der Richter sagt, frag ihm, wo sein Nummer ist und wie er weint. Plötzlich der Jid steigt auf und sagt, my name is Morris Schwartz. And I live at 34 Delancey Street. The Ibizetzer Dritter Rim und Zuck zum Richter. And Nomen is Mara Schwartz at Unne Point of Fiend at Dreisig Delancey Street. In English, quickly, there was a peddler you know, on the Lower East Side in New York, and um, he was peddling his wares with a pushcart. And a policeman comes along and says to him, You have a license? And he says, No, I don't have a license. So he writes out a summons and he has to appear in court. A few weeks later, he goes to court. The clerk takes a look at him with his payas and his hat and his beard. And he says, oh, I think we're gonna need a translator. So they send for a translator. The judge then says, when his case is called, ask him what his name is and where he lives. Before the translator can say anything, the Jew stands up and he says, in perfect English, my name is Morris Schwartz and I live at 34 Delancey Street. The translator turns around to the judge and says, er hat gesucht, as a nomen is Morris Schwartz and er wohnt auf 34 Delancey Street. Classic, classic story, Jeff, it's an oldie but a goodie. It's a classic. So before we break, uh, I wanna let you know, when Mike sent out the messages, um, this time, I think it was also just uh, about a week ago. We sometimes add other things. We talk about Yana. And one of the notices that Mike mentioned was a program that's being offered called the Yiddish Texan. I happened to tune into it yesterday and it was an hour of some of the best music that I have heard. Um, this gentleman hails from Texas. Um, his story is fantastic. And you have Z uh, Zaman Malatek at the piano who also does a little singing. If you get a chance, do look up this, this uh, piece of information and set aside an hour with a cup of coffee or tea, or maybe if you prefer a little schnapps, whatever, that's good too. But do listen to this program. The Yiddish songs are fantastic. 
Not all of them are the favorites that you all know, but he does a great job with all of them. And I think you will find it's a tremendous, tremendous time. By the way, this fellow also was the lead, Tevya, in the Yiddish production of Fiddler. So um, you will definitely enjoy the, the uh, presentation. Mike, I turn it back to you. Yeah, and, and we we we'll well, send out to things. listen to this. A lot of people send us uh, okay. things. We can Bonnie, oh, Bonnie. sign into another class. Hang on, right? yeah, guys. Wait, wait. One at a time. Bonnie, Bonnie wanted to speak. Bonnie, did you uh, where, where did you find that? Yeah. What was it? All right, Mike. Well, actually, look, we will right. send we will send out the link again. Al, make sure I have it. Yes, I love this class. I will send out the recording. I send you. out a few other links. Um, so I want to thank everybody. We, we, have, we have a bunch of connections. Send here. out a link. We, we don't want to lose because we want to talk to Anne because Anne, Shirley, and your family have the exact same background. Shirley was born in Italy. We want to chat with you before uh, before you go. And uh, Hannah. And Hannah. And. Um, We've got a lot of people. Hannah and Ellen. Hannah? The name of the person? Esther. Was it Esther that was also? Awesome? She, she put her phone number. It's it's Ellen, right? Ellen, yes. Oh, I put so my phone she number. She has her phone number on the screen. You see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you guys can chat. And maybe, Anne, if you've got a minute at the end, Shirley may want to share some sure. geography with you. And do you uh, have a question? Ken. Can't. Yes, I, I, I wanted to see if I could get a little help with a phrase that my uh, grandfather used to use. He was born in Romania, so I'm not sure if this is Yiddish, Romanian, uh, a mix up or what. But for very early in the morning, he used to use a phrase, Fatsalach. I've never found it anywhere. Is anybody familiar with that? Fatsalach in the morning. Fatsalach in the morning. Literally translated, ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me. Literally translated, it means fart hole. Fart hole in the morning, though it's very, very early. Let's lock my morning. Let's fart hole in the morning. The ass my mother crack suspected. The my, mo my my mother suspected it might be a little dirty. We can never in, in English. Down. In English, we say the ass crack of dawn. Again, please forgive me. The, the safe <laughs> like that I mull. <laughs> the soap will run in my mouth in a minute. Anna, did you want to say something? Uh, I can't, I didn't see, get the whole phone number of Ellen. It went off okay. the screen to. I'll give it to you now, okay? okay. Give me your phone number, Hannah. 216. 16. Uh, eight, eight, no, 925-6855. 6, 9, 9, no, 925-6855. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, Thank you. Okay. So we're, we're going to end, but if anybody wants to stay on the chat. We... Can I just make a quick suggestion? Go ahead. Go ahead that every time when we finish, we should sort of finish with a sentence, a phrase, because some people don't know Yiddish and it's a way to learn it. Like a simple phrase I just thought of, you know, gate. Hello. Stark. Hello. Most people know it, but you can be different phrases. So that people build right, up yeah. phraseology. Zog nachamol toba. Know it. Zog es nachamol. Zai. Zai gezun tun stark. Yeah, guy gezun. Be strong and healthy. Healthy and strong. Zai gezun tun stark. Zai gezun tun stark. Zai gezun tun stark. Be healthy and strong. Amen. Amen. Alavai. Gute Nacht zu alle Menschen. So, so Anne, Anne, stay on for a second. I'm here. Right, Mike, I will make sure that I find that link and send it back to you in case you don't have it, all right? Ich darf gehen. Sei gesund. Shalom, shalom. Gute Nacht. Sei gesund. Gute Nacht. Talk about getting your, your circle expanded to people uh, in, in this area. If that's okay. If I, I can tell the girls that you are, but see, they all want to speak Yiddish fluently. I don't know. I'm talking about all Yiddish. I don't know about the English. It surely and qualifies. in Toronto. Yeah, where? Who? What's her name? Annette Roberts. Annette yeah. Roberts. 
Don't know them. Don't know the word? No. 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 Richard, you, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. For me? Yeah. yeah, my hand was up before. So I was wanting to make sure that that, that system was being used. So I, I don't know very much, but I, I went to translate and I just want to see if I get this right. Okay. Ich farstein klein over d or die inflections machen mehr lachen. I don't understand. I understand little, but inflections make me laugh. Make Duncan, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know exactly what it meant. You have to say it again because I think you're just pronouncing a few things wrong there. But somebody say it again, maybe. With some of them. Translated it word by word, not. Um, yeah, I know it doesn't have the same. Uh, uh, right again, Richard. The same sense, that's why it's it's different. But it, it, it came it comes in it's in like it written in Hebrew. Right. Uh and, you said Klein, it's, it's, but if you mean a little, then it has to be abyssal. Okay. Klein is small. This one this one says I just put it in translated, it says ich farstein. You understand? Klein, ober, but don't I don't know what the ober is. Ober is butter. But, 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 I understand a little, but the inflections machen mehr lachen. Inflections, the inflections of it make me laugh. Yes, that's true. The, 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 the stories that you were telling, I, I didn't understand them really much except for a mashugana in between, but, but the inflections made me laugh hysterically. It was yeah. just a wonderful thing to hear. That's nice. Yeah, it just is a dying language, unfortunately. Our kids don't understand it. <clears throat> Most kids don't understand. Only the re very religious teach their children Yiddish. But their Yiddish is like a basket. I was sitting at the doctor. This was maybe a year ago. And uh, a young Orthodox man is sitting with me in the, in the waiting room. And he's on the phone. and. He, he's trying to explain something to whoever he's speaking to, and he said, yes, ich gehe to the van store. And my ears were bleeding. They were bleeding. I wanted to correct him. So it's like a chef. The guy said, a chef. <laughs> it, they speak a very, uh, they speak English. English. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's my, so grandf English. my grandfather spoke English. Yeah. Yeah. English, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I want to tell everybody that there is a, a circle which is called Fischl's Yiddish group to which I belong. It's from, it functions from Silicon Valley, from uh, California. On, uh, and Fischl has um, a, a website. It's called Derbey, derbey.org, D-E-R-B-A-Y. <laughs> dot org mirredon dorkun idish mirhobun redders oskumen darzelun uns interessante temes ir zaitale farbeton zukumen the meetings are on tuesdays at 11 uh, pacific standard time two o'clock our time two o'clock eastern standard time and um there is, I can give you, I can write down in the chat box. Yes. What, 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 if, the, you, um, if you would send me the information, you have my email. If you send uh, it Yes, me, Mike, I'll, yes, with pleasure. Yeah, just send it to me and I'll put it, I'll put it out in the, the, the meeting uh, yes. summary and the yes. next invitation, because that's what we're doing. And you're, uh, you're involved with Yana too, right? Me? Is that not right? I think so. Uh, I will write it to you, yes. Yeah, so uh, um, if you're interested- I just want to say something. I think I mentioned to the group last week that I have a collection of 34 pages of Yiddish Sprachworts, which is Yiddish sayings, proverbs and phrases, curses and insults. And it's in Yiddish and it's translated to English for those who don't, don't understand. So, you know, I think it would be nice. It would be very funny to once, uh, I think we, we can't do it today, obviously, but next time, next time, you know, like there's things, I'll just read one of them. I picked out so many to discuss, but for example, in Yiddish, 
you would say, a klieger weiss was er sucht, a nar sucht was er weiss. <laughs> translated, it means a wise man knows what he says and a fool says what he knows. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I have, they're just hilarious. Some of these are really funny and uh, it's worthwhile to go through it. You know, we can discuss a couple of them. Pick, I, I can pick out a few and uh, you have I think you'll have a good laugh. Good idea. The curses. Yeah. Are the most fun. Uh, Asia, is that I, I this I I have put this together through the years because I worked in a Jewish organization, so I I used to you know cut and paste and I collected them all and I've got thirty four pages of them <laughs> and they're so funny. Some of them some of them make a lot of sense and uh, they make you think because I like for example I had one here that was also good. This one said a a patch far held. A patch for Halzach, or a vert, a vert, gedenkzach. So, what does it mean? A slap heals, but a harsh word is remembered. Like the, the Yiddish, once it's translated, it loses something in the translation. But it is, uh, they're very special. These, they're, they're, some of these are, and some of them are funny. Some of them, you know, Yiddish proverbs are, a lot of them were insults too, <laughs> you know. But, that's, that's anyways, right. maybe that's next time I'll be able to make right. some. Do you, have a scan, do you have a scanned copy you could send? Uh, no, and I don't have a scanner right now. That's why I'm looking to get it. Once I get a printer scanner, I will. Uh, I can do that. But uh, we've got oh, a uh, Mike, this, 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 this is blood. Yeah. This took me a long time. I don't know if I can just give it up so easily. <laughs> well, you can give a page or two. All you have to do is take a picture of the page. Okay, okay. I will. Once yes, I, have, and I'll, 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 I, I, have, I can doctor it up so it looks like it was scanned. Where, oh, yeah? are you, okay. where are your parents from? Your family? As the oh, mine? Yeah. I am myself. I'm a Vilna geboren. I was born in Vilna in Lithuania. Ah. In the okay. Sovietish Vilna. Not in the Far Milchomedic Vilna. Ah. Yeah, because you have a little bit of a different accent. I ich rede Litvish and Yiddish. Yes, I see. My elder was a geboren geboren in the Litvish Stetlach. Right. Ich bin geboren geworden in Vilna, aber zehn Jahre noch die Milchomische. And Hannah, Hannah, you said that you're from Toronto originally? Hannah? Yeah. No. Okay, oh. I'm on. Yes. So, yes. Ich bin geboren in Poland, in, in Bielawe. And the mom and Tate sind gekommen zu Toronto, bin ich gewesen, neun Monaten alt. The Tate ist ein Brede. In a Fette, in a Mime. So I came to Toronto and I was in Toronto and I was in Toronto my mom is going American moved to Maryland and yes, I was in Colorado. What's your maiden name? And did you go to McKinn? Baum, B-A-U-M. Do you have any family still in Toronto? Yeah, I have a brother in Toronto. He's um, Joe Baum. He's a, a, a plastic surgeon in a, at Etobicoke General. And my parents died just, you know, within the last 10 years. Did they you go to McKenzie? Did you go to McKenzie? No, I started at Bathurst Heights and then I transferred to, uh, to Fleming. And yes, I, I think we discussed that we were neighbors, right? Yeah, yeah you were on Sultana, I think. And That's I right. I, I know, yeah, yeah. And my dad had a store in the old Kensington Market. So did mine. Really? What was your dad's store? Um, Baum's on 61 Kensington. But what was the product? Uh, fruits and vegetables. You're kidding, because my uncle was right across the street from uh, Lotman's Bakery. Do you remember the bakery in the corner, a big bakery? Oh, yeah. Was he on, on, uh, on Baldwin or on Kensington? Right on Baldwin. Kensington went the other way. He, I know where you were at the bottom of the street there. Yeah. Yeah. He was on Baldwin Avenue. What was his name? Gershon Rosenwald. It was I'm sure, Gershon. I'm sure our parents knew each other. Know each other for and sure. My father was on Spadina all the years. He had a wholesale on Spadina, Spadina oh. College. Well, yes, yeah, we were going to get in touch, Ahena. We were going to get in touch. Yeah. We have to speak to each other. That would be good. We'll get caught up. Yeah. Karen knows your childhood friends from school. Hey, Esther. We lived around the corner from each other. She lived on Rainy and I lived on Sultana. I, I, was, no, I was on Regina. 
Regina, uh, even closer. Regina, yeah, it was Regina and Amir. Yeah, and I live at Amir and Sultana. Yeah, so we were really neighbors. Yes, and we went. So, I went to Fleming too. Yeah. We'll have to connect. I'll, I'll ask Mike for your email address and we'll get in touch. Anna and yeah. How so come there are so many Canadians and nobody from California? I'm Where guilty. I brought them in. Jana comes sometimes. Jana. Uh, so, so, so her and me? That's all what you have from California? I can't believe it. Well, Toronto had the largest concentration one neighborhood the Bathurst Manor of Holocaust survivors outside of Israel yeah they they were that's we, where we, they were. we were we were in Australia Melbourne. Melbourne they told us that was the largest concentration <laughs> we were there last year they, well they, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I discovered about Yiddish <laughs> that I meet people from Canada and their Yiddish is so much better than the Yiddish from the Amer the, the Jews American who grew Jews. up in the, in the United States. Because and I discovered that this happened, one of the major reasons that this happened is because Canadian government was uh, participating in paying for Jewish schools, which did not happen in the United States. No, it's not true. Many not true. Not true. Not true. Until this day, they don't pay for Jewish schools. They pay. But for I heard parents. it from Anne Berman. I don't know if you know Anne Berman. I know that I pay for my grandchildren. You my teacher. Teacher. Uh, so you know what the difference is? Teacher. In Canada, they didn't integrate with the Goyim. It was a very separate society. In United States, it was more of a melting pot. So that's why the Jewish community stayed together and they they spoke Yiddish, you know, amongst each other. Whereas in the United States, they, you know, it became a melting pot because it they was, were- it was, it was a, a, Jewish, you know. a lot of the survivors lived within a five, 10 mile radius of each other. So my mm -hmm. school, our high school was 97% Jewish. So when there was a holiday, they just closed down. But that school did you go to? I went to McKenzie. What about New York? New York, you had the same the same situation. So many Jews. Yeah, I think the difference. Yet, Yiddish did not stay as as well as in Canada. I, I think the difference is that although the survivors, like myself, spoke Yiddish, the children didn't. When they went away to college or when and the American kids go away, they don't come home. A lot of them. It's my grandchildren speak Yiddish because they're Orthodox. Uh, well, we, uh, our, our community is so that, you know, our kids live in California. You know, we, we grew up in Ohio. We, you know, we lived all over. We're very mobile. And, and so you don't have that same concentration. It's pretty, right. Uh, but Hannah and I grew up just a few houses away from each other. And uh, all our parents were greeners, survivors. You heard Yiddish and Hebrew on the streets. And where, where, you grew, where did you Cleveland, grow up? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland. Yes, really? Cleveland, yeah. Yeah, we met when we were 12 years old. Yeah, uh -huh. and we came from Israel. Richard, Richard, Richard. Oh, no, I hear uh, your Israeli accent. Oh, oh yeah. I'm the Vertivri. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening to the story. Did you know a Michalovich family from Cleveland? Who? Michalovich. Oh, wait a minute. There was a religious one. That's right. My father-in-law. My, si my sister's friend. No kids. Do you want to hear this story? So my father-in-law would never go fly on a plane. His secretary, who worked for him for 40 some odd years, went to Israel. And I'm talking about 40 years ago. And those days when you went on a plane and you needed a kosher meal, they call out a name. So they called out Mr. Michalovich. So they go over to this man and he's getting his meal. And my father's secretary goes over to him and says, because our name is Michaels, but it was Michalovich. Went over there. She says, I work for Mr. Michalovich. So they decided that they found out that they were related. They didn't know they survived the war. They lived, they moved to Cleveland, they were religious. And my father-in-law liked to go to the racetrack. They had nothing in common, but they did meet. And right behind my father-in-law's house was their son who was going to who was going to um the uh he was becoming a rabbi. So he went to the what do you call it? Yeshiva behind their house. And we got together and they never knew that they survived the Holocaust, and they're both Michalovages. Uh, now the, their son who went to the yeshiva is a rabbi in Toronto. That's a small I Rich, Rich, Richard, Richard's had his hand up for a while. So go ahead, Richard. I, I just wanted to make a Canadian connection. So my, my, dad, my dad's m mother, um, my booby, 
She was born Korenstein, K-O-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. And she married when she was in Romania, but, but her dad, Avram Korenstein, emigrated to um, Halifax and then moved to uh, Montreal through the Jewish Colonization Association of Canada. I've all, I learned all of this through doing research on ancestry. And I also have some relatives that are from Edmonton and in Vancouver, British Columbia. So I just wanted to make a Canadian connection. Go ahead. They, they got to Canada and well, they came well, brothers were Halifax and they sent them all over Canada, that west and east. Yeah. And there's some Jewish community in in Edmonton, like uh, known or in Saskatchewan, known as Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. They have they have archives in Toronto where I found it about my parents and my husband's parents. They came in through it in nineteen in 1948. Some Jews from Toronto were allowed to go and pick two 2,500 people to come in to work as tailors, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them came to Canada, some of them weren't tailors. My father-in-law came in, they put him in a factory and he was, a, he was sewing uh, furniture, making sofas. But I never knew that until uh, they had this reunion because the man who helped bring them in, the son of the man who's in his nineties wanted to know what happened to all these families that they brought in. And we all congregated, mm -hmm. a lot of us congregated and Trudeau came, we didn't even know it was in the shul. Nobody knew that Trudeau was gonna show up. And he wanted at the time everybody to know that, uh, that Canada was a good country. They were letting all kinds of people and all of a sudden you get this Muslim man that comes in because he wanted to, to everybody to know that everybody is welcome. This is in a synagogue. Everybody is welcome in Canada and this guy presented him with a shirt because he started a factory. Anyways, the whole thing was about all these survivors who came through as tailors. None of them were tailors. They put on a thimble and they said they were tailors because the Jews in Toronto wanted to bring them into Canada. And the only way they could do it is by saying they're tailors. Mm -hmm. And I never knew till last year that my father-in-law came as a tailor. Mort, wow. you, you had your hand up, Mort. I have, I, yeah, I have, I have a question and also a comment. Uh, the question is uh, the uh, concentration of Holocaust survivors in Toronto is very large, but very large relative to what? In other words, is For it, large, is it larger? Larger than the New York concentration? No. No, no. It's just very concentrated in one area. It's that's where they live in, in one specific area. Whereas in New York, they're all over the place. But, but it's a Canada, concentrated Canada. population of and what happens is the, the American kids go off to universities. A lot of them don't come back. They stay in the states that they are. Canadian kids go to Canadian universities. They come back to the city they were born in and they stay there. And they marry and they grow up there and they marry there and they bring up the children all in the same town. It's, right. it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. So, so yeah. I have a question. Are you you are lucky. I, I have <laughs> one, more, one more comment and that is something you should observe in regard to the financing of day schools, the difference between the US and Canada has to do with the fact that we have separation of church and state in the United States. In Canada, it is state sponsored. So no. that's why- the They support the Catholic schools, but no yeah. other- no other nationality. No, no, no other nationality, not Jewish, not Muslim, nothing, just the Catholic. Our public school is actually the Protestant school system. That's the public school. Then there's the, the Catholic school. But uh, what, 25, 30 years ago, they added in the French schools. Which are they, do, 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 most of, do most of the French? children, yeah. most Jewish children uh, attend a, a, a Jewish school? A Jewish Not, school? Anymore. Not anymore. No. My children did. My children, my children kids it's and their children will be attending a Jewish school. It's an expensive, uh, schools are much more expensive than my kids when they were little. It's, it's a fortune. They're not all kids can afford that. Mind you, that UJA it's, it tries to subsidize, but it's, it's, they're closing a lot of the schools. It's a lot of the next generation don't really want to segregate the kids like that anymore. They don't feel it when the, once they come out of it in society today, 
they don't understand it. Only the very religious, really. I don't. So, some of the schools are closing down, right? Ellen, well, a lot of they the don't have the down. population to support them. Like you know, they had the Hebrew High School, Chad, and they opened up satellite schools and they closed it all down, and it's back to the original school. Um, but you know, it's in the Jewish day schools that they they integrate with the other schools. It's not that they, you know, are so only the religious schools, you know, they have a one very narrow focus, but with like Bialik or Leo Beck or uh, USDS, it's very integrated in regular society. Oh. So, yes, so yes, sir, I have a question to you. Um, you mentioned, if I understood correctly, you mentioned that you didn't go on online, you didn't start a Zoom with your 300 member Daughters of the Holocaust Survivors group? No, what happened? How could this have happened? Well, Everybody went uh, online. Right. And it so actually was quite incredible. I, I'm gonna find something if I could reach it. Just one person who came, well, how it happened was 10 of us got together, it was Esther Shear, my sister and uh, a few girls. And it, we just, my sister started the website called Toronto Area Daughters of Survivors. Let, 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 me, let me interject because Sonny's, Sonny's had his hand up now yeah. for quite a while. Okay. Sonny, go ahead. Uh, Esther, I had, uh, if you look at my last name, Michelson is Michalevich. No way. We can do yeah. That. <laughs> so that was, that was really, uh, I do have some, some cousins in Toronto so that are Michelsons, except they spell their name with an A. I don't know why my father ended up without the A, which is much more difficult. All my Canadian cousins spell Michelson with an A. But your original so, name is Michalovich? Michalovich is the way we... So, how many Michalovich? Maybe you're related to my husband. Uh, where are your parents from in Poland? My dad was from... College? Poland. So, you know the town? Um, was it called College? No, it was, he was from Astrin. Astrin? Uh, with an O. Oh, Astrin, yes. Uh, it was between the wars, the, you know, the, the boundary kept on moving. Between. If, you send me, if you send me a little bit of your parents' names and stuff, I could research it because I belong to a website that may, may be able to... Uh... I have, I, I, okay, I will do that. I have a cousin uh, who's a dentist, a Joseph Michelson. I don't know, Joseph. I don't know any Michaelsons. Oh, okay. So, does Mr. Michelson have any relatives in Chicago? Not that I know. Right. Um, and, and I have a question for, for Mike. I still want to be able to translate that postcard that I sent to you yeah, at some time. Surely. He said, he, I gave you that postcard to translate. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll. I'll... She's the translator. Okay. Yes, yeah, she forgot. So she'll she'll do it. She'll do it. I will do it. I so, will. So Anne, Anne, you and Shirley need to connect. Maybe you could say a couple of words because Shirley was born in Italy and went to Israel. Her parents. But where? Which DP camp were your parents and in Italy? It was near Milan because I was born in the city in a regular hospital. That's why I have citizenship. For some reason, and my parents met at, in this camp. My, my, my parents oh. were camp in a in Trieste. It was called Bari. Um, and when I, I wanted to go back with my son and find the camp, and there's a different city in Italy called Bari in the north. It's a port city. So I go there. This is maybe 14, 15 years ago. And I'm asking everybody I can in my broken three-year-old English uh, Italian because you know, I haven't used it in a, a billion years. And they all laughed at me, no Jews here, no Jews here. And this uh, American man starts talking about my son and I in Italian, even though I'm not able to speak, I could understand. He said, oh, the Jews think they're everywhere. Fine, so I get home, I get home and I'm, I'm so upset. I have this picture with my parents under the sign that says body and uh, I did a little more research. Body wasn't in body. Body was in Trieste. So, and they went on the the uh, ship. They went on was uh, La Spezia. They were if if you look up La Spezia, uh, the people on the ship 
renamed it Lo Fredo. Lo, no, Fredo. They, they weren't scared. And if you look up the articles from that time, they refer to it as the greatest marketing ploy in the world. So what had happened was there were a number of Jews on the ship. Uh, my mother said the 200 were all pregnant and like ready to drop. My mother included. And um, like all the other ships that went to uh, Atlit, they were stopped and they, they didn't want to let them in. And these people were, they, they felt hopeless. They said, this is it. This is, you know, from pillar to post, what are we going to do? We're not going to die on this ship. So the men decided they were going to pull straws. And whoever pulled the short straw was to go on the top deck and commit suicide. Right. And they were doing that and because there was a lot of uh, journalists, uh, journalists were there taking pictures, writing, whatever. Um, but the British weren't allowing them in. So my father, whenever he would tell the story, he cried because he said it was the second time that he had to pull straws in his life and he didn't win the first time. And the second time he was so scared that he was gonna have it because they had decided that's what they were going to do. I don't know how many of the men actually committed suicide. I know some did. And that was the reason they were allowed to go into Israel. They went into Yaffa. My mother, uh, my mother and these 200 other women pregnant, uh, were taken to the jail. And if you know the jail in Yaffa, it's not very big. Yeah. It's not very large at all. If you could imagine 200 women, my mother said, laying on the floor, on the dirt floor, uh, head to foot, head to foot, head to foot, everybody in labor and screaming every language you could imagine. And all of them giving birth on the floor. That's where my brother was born. Terrible. I, uh, uh, my parents Wait, experiences, we... Uh, we went to Israel, but we were caught by the British and we were incarcerated in Cyprus until Israel became a state. And that's my, when- My aunt and uncle also in Cyprus. What was the name of your parents' ship, Shirley? I never heard a name. Because my husband's parents came on, on a ship that was redirected into Cyprus. And the name of their ship was Yehuda Levi. You got the right. I'm going to look it up. I don't know. Um. And you know, uh, uh, there is a new translation. I wrote to, to Michael yeah, this yeah. book about that um, it had this journalist from Forwards from New York. Right. And he wrote in Yiddish. He actually joined the Mapilim in those ships. And this book was just now translated, and it's called. Uh, the Jews part the seas. The Jews, um, yeah, uh, we have it. I'm going. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, it's uh, very good. It's there's a there's a great book. I think it's written by uh, Anita Diamond, who wrote the Red Tent. Right. She, did you read the book? It's. Um, I, I read the book and I didn't like it. I think the Red Tent was a very good book, but this book you mean about the internment camp in Atlit? Yes, yes. I think oh, it's that's a very bad book. I would not recommend it. Sorry. I, I was so interested in reading it because my aunts had arrived in Israel before my parents. And uh, when I was talking to my aunt, she's passed away since. She said, Yeah, that's what we did. We took our babies. We ran into the water holding our babies in our arms so they wouldn't shoot us. And we told everybody, Jump off the boat, come into the water so that everybody was wet, everybody mingled, bring your babies, let's go. And so they couldn't stop them. They didn't know who was already uh, allowed in and who wasn't. These women were fearless, absolutely fearless. Hmm. Uh, we need to Sorry. find out more detail. I'm looking forward to speaking with uh, both of you. Yeah, more, 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 go ahead, you have something to say. I just make one, one comment. Uh, the ship, the unafraid, uh, the well-known author Meyer Levin was on that ship and he produced a documentary on it and it was uh, in connection with some help from the Jewish agency. But what he was there 
together with his wife, to rescue Tories to the French author. Do you know the name of the, the documentary? I'd love to see it. I'd love to find it. The document, the document, the document we, we can probably, uh, I can probably look for it. Oh, uh, I'll yeah, figure out where it is. I would love, I would love to, to be able to find it. I would appreciate that. Sonny, do you have my uh, phone number or uh, Sonny, Michael Michalovich? Yes, I have it. <laughs> Michalovich, I want to find out if we're related. <laughs> you have my number? Good. Yes. And it, somebody asked me, okay, I think it was you, Mike, you wanted to ask how I got that many women together? Well, no, I was really asking if you would be taking uh, people from uh, around the, the states because we, we we have a lot of people here on this call that would be interested. I know Shirley would be interested, Hannah would be interested. Well, right now we just do the Toronto area daughters. But it, I just but you know you'll you'll send me the, your your addresses and stuff and we'll put together um, February eleventh we have just this this speaker coming. We're doing it on Zoom and that's she uh Arit Felsen. I don't know if you've ever heard of Arit Felsen. She's the daughter of survivors and she's a psychiatrist. She's a psychologist, psychologist. Psychologist from New York. And she's going to speak about what it was like during the pandemic, how we handled it, you know, survival mode. We all went into the survival mode and, uh, and siblings, you know, what's, uh, how is it when parents are gone or how the siblings uh, interact today. So she studies the... Uh, the Holocaust survivors and children of Holocaust survivors. And of course, we have a lot of things in common. And she has a lot of topics that she speaks about. The topic that she's going to be speaking about the evening of February 11th is the resilience of children of Holocaust survivors and how when something like COVID comes along, we are very resilient and we rise to the occasion and we handle things very well. And the other topic is siblings and growing up in a home with, you know, parents who are Holocaust survivors and the birth order, what difference it makes with the firstborn, secondborn, thirdborn, and the interaction of the siblings. It's very interesting. What, what is her name? It's Zoom? She, it's a Zoom, yes, on February 11th. Get hold of the address. Yes. Email me. Uh, if you want to, me to put it out to everybody, just send me. And, and you know, you got the the uh, reminder. The thing is, we, we you need. Send me anything. I'll, I will send it out to everybody. Okay, we just need them. I, I want to show you the book about the uh, here. Right, illegal Jews part the seas. Very interesting. And it was written in Yiddish originally in ah. 46 because he was on the ships and then he was even incarcerated. The British caught him, put him in prison in Palestine. But it was only the last couple of years they translated it into English. Thank you. Very I good. Think, it's a uh, documentary. The current, Hadassah, the current Hadassah magazine reviewed this uh, book, or oh. they they had us. They mentioned it and reviewed it. Uh huh. Oh. Can I ask? Very, ask very uh, strong on Adassa, surely. <laughs> 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 With a joke and this is your resources. <laughs> Asia, could you tell me where you were in Israel? Where did you live in Israel? In Israel? Yeah. In Israel, I left. I lived in the north in a Yishuv Kehilati, in a community settlement called in uh, in the Galil, in the Lower Galilee, called Givatela. I was a teacher. You might know Moshev Nahalal, where Moshe Dayan is from. It's uh, between Haifa and Nazareth. I was a teacher okay. there for 18 years. So I lived very close to Nahalal. What did you teach? Tivon. What did you teach there? I taught English. I mm -hmm. was a teacher of English, yeah. Esther, I don't have your phone number, but I gave you mine in the chat. Oh, okay. Got it. I grew up in uh, Shikuna Mizrach, uh, a suburb of uh, Rishon. Rishon. Oh, and Rishon. Hannah, where are you from? Tel Aviv? Uh, I, I, yeah, wait a minute. I, I grew up in Derech Yafo, Tel Aviv, between Tel, Tel Aviv and Yafo, yeah, uh, in the southern more, near Shkunat Florentine. Then I moved 
then we moved to Bnei Brak Al Gvul Ramat Gan. For, I was there for two years before we came here, but I just want to talk about Cleveland a second. When we came here, our parents, they all found each other, the survivors, they had a call Israel a group that they got together constantly and they saw each other socially. Um, Shirley and I, we live in the same neighborhood and, our, and we had a neighborhood of all the greener together, all Israelis and stuff like that. And we kids, we our whole social life was there. I mean, we did not get involved in our high school uh, at public high school, we were all only with each other. We had our own parties, our own get togethers constantly. And um, as far as Yiddish, I spoke, my parents spoke Hebrew, Yiddish to each other in Hebrew. And I spoke to my father Yiddish, my mother Hebrew, and Shirley spoke to her parents strictly Yiddish. And uh, many of us spoke only Yiddish to our parents. So, and Jewish education in Cleveland, um, in Cleveland, all the Jews live on one side of, of, of the city on the, on the east side. We don't, we are very united. And we have Jewish schools here, I don't know, five, six. And now the state of Ohio is giving vouchers, $5,000 per child, where if you live in an area where the public school is subpar, they, um, they give for, that parents can go to any school of their choice. So many, many from New York have been coming to Cleveland here lately, especially Orthodox people. So because they send their kids to Jewish day schools and they have been getting like 5,000 per child. I don't know how long that will last, We've had a Republican governor for a while, so that, that has been going on here. Uh, when my kids grew up, they went to uh, the day school here, uh, Hebrew Academy, Salam we, we we had to pay, we didn't have that. And uh, my grandkids also go to uh, Jewish day schools in New Jersey and New York, and like you said, it's a fortune. <laughs> Nobody helps over there. But yeah. um, um, Shirley, my late husband's parents also were in Milan after the war, and they went to Israel. I'm wondering if you know of any names. Uh, is, there, is there anybody that you can remember their name that was that was in Israel with you after Milan? Family members? Yes. There was a Tugentman. Does the name Strakovsky sound familiar? Because my mother-in-law had a, uh, a, a sister that was also in Milan and they all went to Israel after. Wow, no, yeah. I don't. You know, you know, uh, we've got some pictures from Milan of, of groups. I'm of just wondering if they were together with the, you know. We've got, we've got pictures of a bunch of women swimming and things like that. So who knows? It could I be. should see, you know, you never know. Send you a uh, yeah. Yeah, because we, we've got a bunch of pictures. From yeah. There. But I wanted to add to what Hannah said. Um, Hannah and I and our friends went to the public school, but our high school had, what, 33,000 students? 3,500 and over 3,000 were Jews. So it it's it's an amazing time. community. Yeah, and, and I, I was yeah. sort of the outsider because I, I was the first American that Shirley ever dated. Isn't that right? You said it was the first, and her father was, um, her father wanted to throw me out of the house, you know? <laughs> I, think I was Jewish, I came in with these, these chinos on, you know, these light colored pants. He grabbed me by the arm into the kitchen and my dad was the mildest person. And in Yiddish, she says to me, er Zaid, er Zaid. And I said, yo, yo, Zan, Zan Zayde is a uh, lip off, A.B. lip off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My experience. Honey, uh, my husband's here. He he'll be your relative if you're related. Tell me how you spell how you spelled your name before you went to Michael Michelson. M I. Um, my Canadian cousins have it M I C H A E L S O N. Okay, but Michelson. you said it was that's Michelson. But before it was it Michalovich before? It was Michalovich, as best I, I can. I I saw both a, both a uh, a Russian spelling and a Polish spelling, you know, right. with the W C Z at the end. Doesn't matter. C Z T Z. Yeah, You'll send me your parents. Um, I'll put my email here. You send me your parents' names, and I and I'll try and look okay. it up. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say good night. Can I just ask the Canadians? I used to know a Bruria from Hamilton. And uh, Bruria, it's an unusual name. I know Bruria. I know, you know Bruria. Bruria. She used to live in. If she lives in Toronto. She used to live in Hamilton. Oh, could uh, be. She, she was from uh, from Hamilton. She speaks a very good Yiddish. When I met her, 
She yeah, I met her. Is the one that wrote a book? Esther. Yes, that's Bruya. That's my friend, uh, a very good friend of my girlfriend. She belongs to our group. Yes, Esther, Esther, if she went to, uh, to, to school in New York, to okay. college. Okay, I'll ask her. I'll ask her. I'll find out. She, yeah, we lost, that, we lost touch with her. <laughs> oh, because I, I know who it is. If this is the Bruya that I'm thinking of. How well, I know, I know, I remember she was from Hamilton. I have to find out. I don't know if she was from okay. Hamilton, but I'll ask, I'll find out. Well, good night, everyone. It was very nice. Yeah, nice night. to meet everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Nice to meet you tomorrow. Okay, good. Good. We'll speak tomorrow. Nice to meet everyone. Have a great night. It was wonderful. Thank you. Ramadazin. Ramadazin. Ramadazin.